Hey guys, John with Off Grid Homesteading. Um, welcome to a new installment of fixing our water pump at the lower cistern. Uh, hopefully this will be the final fix. I've been using a SureFlow diaphragm pump for the first year and a half. Um, the diaphragm pumps work great. They can actually pump up to about, uh, you know, siphon in about seven feet of uh, pressure and uh, then pump it up the lines that are going up to our upper cistern. Challenge is when it gets cold, that box gets real cold, the parts inside start freezing, and the components in there uh, start failing. That failed last, uh, a little bit after last winter, and uh, the components are failing again. So, it's now time to take this Aquamarine made 24 volt DC pump, 4 amps max, 100 foot, maximum submersible to 100 foot, and it'll do 1.6 gallons per minute. But this is the, one of those pumps you'll find on Amazon. I'll put a link to this. I think it was about $90. Um, I ended up getting one. The top was cracked. The company was real good. They ended up uh, sending me another one. Uh, took forever to get it and then when I finally called and said where the heck's my cap um, they just went ahead and <clears throat> shipped me another unit um, and then a few days later the caps came in so I have two units now for the price of one that's being frugal not cheap so uh, with this pump I'm going to be installing it inside the cistern I got to drill some holes in the side of the plastic here um, for the uh, uh, pumping lines going up into the system, but I gotta make sure that the PEX goes all the way to and inside the top cap here. Otherwise, it will freeze and it will expand and um, it'll crack. All the metal parts in between seem to crack, so uh, I have to eliminate all of the metal pieces. Unfortunately, there's one metal piece down there. So, we got a little weak link in the system. What I should have done is ha actually run this uh, continual pipe directly into this tank the first time. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to put it on. And apologies for looking like a gimpy old man. I hurt my back last week and it's uh, been taking its toll. This is, I think, the. I heard it on Monday. Today is Thursday, so I can finally at least walk around a little bit. But I still feel pretty stiff. I'm going to show you the flow inside. Never shown this before. That's coming directly from our developed spring. I'm going to have a PEX pipe going from here to the outside, coming down to this pumping situation here. I'm just taking a regular uh, garden hose, which is the one that seems to fit great here. And I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and give me some extra slack here. Got that fairly tight here. I'm going to go ahead and put a float valve in here just in case I can get it to work. So that if I'm gone and this thing is pumping up to the top, when the um, water reaches the bottom it will turn off the pump keep it from burning out or having any issues. I'll need to get some sort of wire tie to keep this in place. The original wire tie, copper wire.
Okay, now I'm going to drill the two holes for the electric wires. One for the float, va float switch and the other one for the pump. Okay, so what you see in here, I've got my PEX coming in to this point right here. I didn't, I'd, I'd really like to go from three quarter right to the opening, I mean, uh, coming on the output there, but uh, this is already run, it's already in the box. This has not broken, that has not broken, so I think we're gonna be pretty safe. Um, this is uh, my release the water, it actually holds the water from the top of the hill down here so that if I'm working on the pump I can shut this off, work on it without getting uh, back sprayed. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover these back up. Give it a little bit more protection from the winter. I need to come back and uh, put some uh, electrical tape around all this to make it a little bit better, but this is the positive wire coming off of the solar panel. This is a negative. Um, I am going to go basically positive to positive to positive, negative through the switch to that. So as long as the float is up, it'll get power. When the float goes down to the bottom, it'll shut the pump off. Just remember, the white is positive on the pump. And the switch, it doesn't matter which side you put the uh, connection on. It can switch the positive or it can switch the negative. No, it does not make a difference. I'm just doing this to give me a little bit more slack here. I don't know where my wire, uh, my uh, special wire cutters went, so going back to what works. Twist those really good. Same thing here. Okay, I gotta strip these now. Positive to positive. Just gonna even see if I can hear the pump running for a second. Feel voltage. All right, so go from here. Okay, I had this set up for my other setup. There you go. Now we got voltage right there. I had this set up for uh, the stop switch up top. So with the black wire, that's a negative. So right now, with this one, um, while the float is up, it cuts the power. And when the float is down, it starts it. So we need it the other way around. When the float is up, the power starts. When the float is down, the power stops. So this one is not going to be used. And I'm going to use the opposite wire. 
because this float switch can work in open up or open down. And the way I could check that, real simple. You look close, no spark. Look here, spark. So you got an open circuit, I mean a closed circuit on the red wire right now. And that's what I want. I want it on when the water is up. I want it off when the float drops. Okay, so I'm going to put the cap back on, um, gather up all my crap and take it back to the top of the hill. And then uh, what I need to come down here and do is fill these holes up with some silicone, keep any critters and stuff from getting in there. And then as soon as I get a break in the uh, clouds for a minute, um, I can go up, up there and after a few minutes and we should be hearing water uh, pumping into the upper cistern with this new submersible pump. So we're not gonna have any issues with priming anymore. So I, um, after all the iterations of the pumps and stuff that I've used, this little orange one that comes up as like a solar well pump, um, because we're not pressurizing a tank up top, it goes right, it just drops into the tank from the PEX right into the inlet hole on the side of the tank. Um, that's why you can actually pump that far, because it's uh, it says it'll actually pump 100 feet of head um, up there. We're going 50 foot this way and we're not pressurizing so yeah, I've actually had this pump running, the, I had the other pump running at the pond and it pumped from the pond all the way to the top of the hill. So I know it works already. Um, we just need to, uh, I'm just glad this is done. I just don't have to mess with this thing freezing any, uh, anymore. Except these connections here and if these still have an issue freezing I'll have to insulate them more and uh, figure out something uh, a better solution to just put more insulation around these uh, outlet pipes. All right. Okay, I don't think I've shown the whole system together in one video for quite some time. I showed it in the, in the beginning when I was building it. So you can see our setup over here now. We've got our overflow down here. Returning back to the stream. Here's our overflow. This is going down to our pumping um, valve and stuff. Here's your wires coming in to the edge of the box, coming up and around into there, lids on. And this is being gravity fed all the way back over there. Let me show you. I buried uh, amplifier wire which is 10 gauge wire, all the way back here, 100 feet of it. I'll put a link for that in here as well. And I did red and black wire. The uh, red has turned clear and the black stayed black uh, down here. So this is your positive, this is your negative, and these are your, uh, oh gosh, I forget what these, MC, oh, what are they? But anyway, these come off the solar panels. So here's the rating on the solar panel itself. So Windy Nation, this is the ones I used here. I'll put a link in the description if they're still available or something comparable. And then, basically, I built a frame. At a, uh, I believe I did a 35 degree, no, 33 degree angle. And then I wired them in parallel, so you got 12 volts 
with lots of amperage, I could actually wire them in series now and give me 24 volts. I don't know, I might check that out and see if that might work better. But let's walk over and see how the spring is doing. I know my battery's running low. Now it's working pretty good. So here's my overflow. Here's my overflow. And you can see we're not having very little leakage right there where we did all the uh, all the work before. This is coming off right off the top. That's coming off the other edge. And then this one is coming off in between the rocks here. Got our main cut off right there. Looks like this has failed. So that'll have to be replaced at some point. We got this one here. Oh, look. Keep a little PEX connector handy. And let's see what's in here. Not bad. Bad at all. A couple of, uh, uh, what are they, roly polies? Let's get rid of those. Let's release this. Flush everything out. Stop it. And I just try to cover it up, keep sunlight off of it. Help keep it from getting algae too soon. And as you can see, this follows the path here all the way down to the lower cistern. And then this is our, this area stays full pretty much all the time. If you had to, you could drink it through a special filtration system. We've got one here that we can actually test out and try. I'll show you that a little bit later when it gets a little bit warmer. so peaceful back here. So thanks for joining me on my trip today. Off-grid homesteading. Signing off.